No, actually it has wheels on it. Oh, and it has five spoke wheels on it. Like, I'm not kidding. Like, that, that image right there. Looks like a back of a car, doesn't it? Oh yeah, that's a car. That looks like a rounded portion of a car too, on its wheels. I think that's Duke. I said it twice yesterday, but I'm saying I, on the other cars that we dove on, but right now I'm saying that one is Duke. I can't find it. It's close, but it's not on it. The case that we are working today is Duke Herringer. 63 years old, he goes missing October 21st of 2018. The vehicle in question is a white Chevy Cruze. His license plate number is 7DQS961. Today's day two of our search, where yesterday we found 10 vehicles, today we found eight more. And this one right here that Matt's coming up to right now, the cell phone ping happened at this bridge as his last known location. We have three targets we're diving today. We're gonna to bring you back into the story right now, but if you have not seen episode number one, the link is in the description. Highly suggest that you go watch that first. For families who have all but given up on finding their loved ones, this team is a last hope. Civilian divers cracking cold cases for free. Now, my understanding in uh, speaking with your family over here is that he lived up in Cortland at the time. Uh, yes, he lived down below, yes, out, in, out below Cortland. Do we have a boat ramp? Or, taking this Sutter Road, do we have any easy access off the edge into the water? So we're not able to tell what it is. We can tell that it's a car that's not an SUV, in my opinion, at this moment in time. Nissan. Can't tell what uh, what model. Right there. Look, look, look. Ooh. Whoa! Did you see that on live? Yeah, I think that's Duke. I think we found him right there. I can't really I make anything out on it. And I don't see a line coming. Like, I don't know where that line is coming from. And I'm over here also. So I don't feel like it's straight in line with that, but I don't know why there's a, a buoy there. The location that we were at that I was just mentioning is right here at the Steamboat Slough Bridge. The car in question is upside down, not too far from the buoy. Now this is where I wanna bring you into how we use Sartapo which is a mapping system that we use to break down our cases where, where did Duke live? Where did he work? Where did his family live? As well as, in this instance, we're lucky enough to have a cell phone ping. Now, anytime we have a cell phone ping, that becomes our new five mile radius that we like to start searching from. And so in, in this instance, we have Duke's home over here, just west on Lambert Road of I-5. We have the Herringer family winery up here to the north, which is where mom lived. And then down here to the south, just off of Steamboat Slough Bridge, is where we had Duke's last cell phone ping. So now that we have a cell phone ping as our very last known location, this is where we then take a five mile radius and we treat this as our new search zone. Now, one of the downsides of searching this in this area is we have the Sacramento River, just north of us is Sacramento, and the river splits and you have the main deep channel here, and then you have the secondary Sacramento River that comes down through here. 
From there, you then have these slews that break off and everything's flowing south at this, at this point in time. And right here where the cell phone ping is at, it then cuts into Steamboat Slough. Now, the reports that we had coming into this is the Cortland Fire Department, as well as others in the area, did not know of any vehicles underwater in the area. And surprisingly, Matt, we ended up finding 10 cars yesterday. Now, when we're doing the sonar, we're able to identify to some degree if it's a vehicle in question that we might want to that we might want to dive on. Some vehicles were able to identify, such as a pickup truck, which was a little bit further up here in the north in the slough. Down as we were moving our way north, I had a target here. Wasn't really interested in it in the way it showed up on sonar, but I do have a second one here that I marked for a location that we're gonna wanna go back to later on today. But we have to come up with our game plan as to how and why we're gonna run certain things today with this uh, slough. And part of it is because this river here is actually a tidal river. And because I'm going to be diving in it, especially when we get up to the here to this car that's upside down, I need to make sure that I'm doing it on the in tide tide that's coming in to lessen the flow of the current that's coming into this river right here from the mouth of the Sacramento River that's coming in here. It's really strong underneath the bridge, but I am really, really interested in, I have a white buoy that's in the river here. It's down river about 50 feet from where I have identified a car almost dead center in the channel upside down. And with Duke's cell phone ping being right here, right now, this is the most logical, the most probable target that we have today. Now, some of the other targets that we ended up finding in here, I was not interested in these two targets. I could tell that they were either older or just not the right shape that we were looking for. This is the truck in question. Uh, 10 cars total is what we ended up finding. Now I have another one that is of high interest. We did not dive on it, but we will do so later on today. And I think that it's going to be after that one o'clock hour when I get up to this car that's upside down. If that's not our vehicle, then we'll drop back. Now we could, because they are closer to shore, I could make it work right now. But what I wanna do is come back to down here where we put in yesterday, put in again, and we're gonna run the south side of this slew in here along the Grand Island Road. And this channel on this on the south side is a little bit deeper from what Cade and I found yesterday. Yesterday we had some spots that were 30 to 35. We did hit some 40 at some point, but the average seemed to be about 17 to 25 is where it's at. So searching isn't bad. It's a nice clean bottom and we'll continue to run that. Should take us about three hours to make it back up here. And it's about a three, four mile uh, jaunt to make it back up this uh, area. Now, at the end of yesterday, we also, we were really hopeful. You know, Steve, who is Duke's brother, met up with us with this target right here, Jen, just the way that it showed up on sonar and the car is upside down. It has the perfect curves as to a Chevy Cruze that we're looking for and five spoke wheels. And that's what we're looking for is a Chevy Cruze with five spoke wheels. When I dove on it, landed on it, was not a white car. I knew it immediately. It was blue in color. And you know, it was just a whole feelings of disappointment. Like if I had to bet the farm on it, I would have lost the farm yesterday that that was not the vehicle we were looking for. With that, Matt, let's move down to our first location, get put in, and we're gonna start running the, the uh, river for the next three, four hours. All right. We're going to be heading this way on the south side of the slough right there. But with this being a 90 right here, I just want to finish double checking this while we're here that was on the north side of Sutton Road as we get our day going. All right, that channel drops off to 28 feet. There is a pickup truck right there. Just went over the top of it. I'm gonna put it on live scope a little bit better here. Let's see if we can get a good reading of it right there. Oh, 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 let me get back up over it. 
So right there on life scope, I'll give you a good straighten up with it. Uh, it's gonna be out in the river just a little bit more. Right there, four door flatbed. I'm gonna say it's probably a Ford pickup truck. Right there, there's the pickup truck. See it? Make a note of it. All right, I think I have a car over here on the left. It's over. Right there. Is that a car? We'll come back over it, kind of where that green bush is at, off of the bank. I'm gonna show you what I'm looking at here on uh, our side imaging and down imaging as I come back across over the top of it here. Right there on live, it's coming up. That thing's been buried under there. It's more of a channel, so it's going to be buried more than other cars. Looks like it's upside down. And just a quick uh, overview as to how I'm looking at these. This is a live scope, so anything that's happening is happening in real time here. As a fish swims by, we'll be able to see a fish in real time. Whereas over here is a picture in time, so I can actually scroll back to it. On the down imaging, I'm looking at the height here. So I can see that roughly it's 16 feet to, you know, 13 and a half. So it's a car, not a truck. And then side imaging, I'm casting 75 feet to the right, 75 feet to the left, anything that is black is water column. And between those three, as I'm heading up the river, and I'll show you real quick how I normally scan, is as I'm scanning, I'm gonna be scanning up the river against the current, and I'm gonna pull this over to where roughly 36 feet off of the shore is where I'm gonna scan. So the dark right here is the shoreline above the water, and this is below the water. And that's my normal scan pattern. So right now what I'm gonna do is hand the camera back to Cade and go and identify a little bit more as to if that is a vehicle, what type of vehicle, whatever information I can get off of it. And it's right in line with that green bush that's on the rocks right there. And I know that it's roughly 55 to 60 feet offshore. All right, so we're coming up to it on live scope. And then we're going to kind of swing the live scope and see if we can identify if it is a car or more of a pile. And it kind of looks like right there at the back of it, at the five and the three mark, that it had some wheels, but it's very buried in the silt and the sediment. It's also in heavier current. And while I will mark it, I'm not going to um, identify this one as a risk factor for us to dive on today. Doesn't have the probability that I'm really looking for, but we do want to make sure that we keep this one in question as to, you know, maybe later time this fall when the water level is lower, we can come back and double check this one. If we don't find Duke in one of these other locations we're looking for today. And we're on a, the tide is currently going out, so the tide is running, or the current is running a lot quicker right now than when the tide is coming in. All right, so the one I overshot, I didn't overshoot it by too much. We are currently the blue dot right here, and we're heading down here. I actually have two vehicles down here, but this one right here is my vehicle in question. So we'll put ourselves right over the top of it, and get it marked and then we'll enter from the shoreline later. We'll either just rip the magnet off if we don't need to dive it or if we do need to dive it, we'll just come in from the shoreline up here. And this one is not gonna matter as far as the tidal goes in here today because it's close enough to shore, the current is not going to interfere with me as much as this car up here by the Steamboat Slough Bridge is that that's the one that I really need to make sure that we try to uh, hit at 1, 1.30 today. Two o'clock at the latest is our goal on the one up, up, uh, up the slough here. Yeah, I didn't overshoot this by that much, so that's good news. Right, I'm gonna put our sonar in. 
We should be hitting it right about any second now. You should see it pop up. There it is, right there. Put us back over it. And then the second one was right by these rocks, I remember, yesterday. Yep, there's the second one. I'll show you on sonar here. I'm siding down what we just came across and what I saw, and then we'll go back over it real quick. So this is our first one of, uh, this was, this is our first one of interest. This is the one we just went over. We're gonna come over it nice and easy, both directions, kind of give you a good reading as to what we're looking at. And then I'm gonna mark it. And so the first one is right off of these rocks right here. So there's the first one. And that's the one that had the uh, deeper wheels on it. It was an older car. And then here's the second one, it's off to the left, and this is the one that I'm interested in. Because I think that this one might have five spoke wheels on it. But I can't tell at that angle at the moment. The other thing we're looking for is how far is that back wheel from the back of the car there. All right, there it is right there. All right, we got a nice lock. the best place to take it ashore over here because I got to think about how we're going to come down yeah but I want to come in from downstream or upstream to down okay, that's attached that might be our car I mean I know I said that yesterday but I'm going to take you over it a few different directions and really focus on these wheels right here as well as the distance from the rear wheel to the back of the car. And uh, we'll put up on screen right now the Chevy Cruze that we're looking at. And this is an actual photo of his car. And if you take a look at where the rear wheel's at to the distance of the back of the car, that's one of the things that we're looking for as we look at it on live scope here. The second thing we're looking for is what do those wheels look like? Can we tell if it's a five spoke wheel or not? So as it's coming up right here, that's the back of the car. And can we see five spokes on there? Kind of looks like it. Yeah, there's, there's five spokes on there. I think we have it then. Let's continue with our game plan of what we're doing. We'll head up the river some more. We'll identify the other target that I had in question. And then we'll keep scanning the south side also. I think that's Duke. I said it twice yesterday, but I'm saying I, on the other cars that we dove on, but right now I'm saying that one is Duke. So we have quite a ways. We got probably a good hour before we get to this next location that we're after. Plain as day. Let's put that back on live scope and see what kind of car it is. Okay, so right there, life scope. Let's see what kind of wheels it has. Okay. All right, what do you think about that one there, Cade? That one, see the wheels, how far from the rear of the car it is? Yeah. It looks like, well, yeah, but I mean, hold on, wait a minute. Look at it, looks like, um, that one also looks like five spoke. but it looks further from the back of the car. That's like quite a distance. 
I'm interested in it, but not enough to dive on it in this current. But let's mark it. Put it on our map. Just not enough for me to be convinced on this one. The other one I'm more convinced on. Plus, look at this, all right? You have, we already know that this car is not him. See that? You have a memorial up there for this car. So, not it, but we will put it on our map. Add a vehicle, or a boat, one of the two, because we're right next to some boats, so. This is probably a boat that is sunk here. I'll show you what I got on. Down imaging and side imaging. So this is the side of it, and this is the side of it. Yeah. No, actually it has wheels on it. Oh, and it has five spoke wheels on it. Like, I'm not kidding. Like, at that image right there. But it's like, as I'm going like this, so I don't really, really know. So we're gonna go put live scope on it to the left a little bit. Kind of at the end of the dead one there. Okay, there it is on live a little bit. And you actually can't tell. It might be a, might be a boat, might be a car. But the way that this dock is here is gonna be really, in my opinion, just based upon the dock, it would be really difficult for it to be a car to make it out and around the dock, settle in behind the dock, but you do have a parking lot right in front of it as well. So, I mean, you could possibly have a car that came off the front, but here it is right here. I don't think it's upside down if it's a car. I think it's right side up, but I'm more inclined right now to think that it's a boat. But it could be a car. So I'm gonna put a pin on it. We'll keep it in mind here is where it's at. There it is right there. Nice clear shot. I'm gonna say a boat, but might be a car. Look at that. That looks like a Jeep. Kind of a cool Jeep. Yeah, I'm gonna say that's a Jeep. Roll bars, all that fun stuff. And there's a car. Been under there a long time. It's buried quite a bit. All right, so let's mark that one. Unidentifiable car, upside down, buried in the silt. Can't tell. If it's been in here, if that's a car, it's been in here for 15 to 20 years, buried. I'm not gonna mark it. Need to mark. This is the second vehicle that we're diving today. All right, there it is on sonar. See it on live right there. I'm gonna say no on this one. Where the wheels are in relation to the back of the car. It's quite a distance on that one. But you have five spokes on it on the front there. It's a five-star wheel four or five. It's not a hubcap wheel. So that brings it back into play. But I think the back is too far away. More like it's like a um, Camaro. Possibly. I feel like we'd be wasting our time on this one right now. I, I like the front wheel. I like the five spoke. But I don't like the distance at the back of it. I mean, to me, it's not a to me, it's not a cruise. It's just way too long, and it's not rounded at the back there. And it's too long. Look at it, seven, 
10, that, that thing is 17 feet long. Seven and nine, 16 feet long, too long. We can always come back to it later on if we need to. Can't tell if it's just the way the bank comes up right here or if we have a car here. Kind of weird reading it. Right there, looks like a back of a car, doesn't it? Oh yeah, that's a car. That looks like a rounded portion of a car too, on its wheels. Check it out. That could be our car. It's not very far out. Has the round curvature we're looking for. I need to get like a good shot on live and then we need to compare it to the cruise. Kind of goes. It doesn't drop off like the cruise. Look at it, look at it right there. Mirror up at the front. I would say based upon where the mirror is at. So there, 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 there. I'm gonna say it's not. Would you agree that it's not? Or that it is? I'll prove it's a car. Cause it's not that far underwater either. Yep, yes. I think it was sticking. Hello, Jared. Yes, sir. Steve. Yeah. I thought maybe the wind might have run you off. Oh no, we're doing really good out here today. I think oh. we found uh, six vehicles so far with a possible seventh that I'm working on right now. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Where are you located now? Uh, I am on the south side and probably about two thirds of the way back towards the Steamboat Slough Bridge. Okay, see you in a bit. All right, bye. That may not be the car. It's not attaching. But I'm gonna keep trying. Right. No, it's definitely a car. Look at it right there. Yep. It went right over it. It went right over it. It went right over it like it's a rock. Uh -huh. Bounced all the way over. But look at it. No, look, I mean, look at it. That's a car. Right there. No, see, it's attaching. That's attached. That's a car. Just like I said it was. Pull into this little cubby here and have a little shouting match. So we just marked car number seven on the south side here. The, uh, as far as diving anything on this side, I have one that I just marked that is buried pretty good. It's upright, it has some curves like a cruise, but not enough for me to say, you know, we have to, but we're going to. I also have one marked on the other side that's probable as well, that's upside down. So right now we have two that are marked for sure. I'm gonna finish running this up to the bridge and then see what my safety is as far as being able to dive that one in the middle. Okay. I'm really interested in that just because of where the ping was at and where that car is at. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's where we're at in the process right now. So probably another half hour to an hour before I make it up there. Okay, well I don't wanna slow you down. Going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you found ten on the other side and another seven so far on this side. My Lord. Yep. So seventeen so far. I hope they're mostly empty. Well, yeah. Well, we know that probably one is for sure. There's some blue crosses down here, oh. and there's a car straight out from there. Oh. So that one, I'm guessing, is empty, and they know about that one. Yeah. Okay. Well, God bless you. Thank you very much. We'll see you. In a, we'll see you in a bit. Thanks, Steve. That's nice and prominent. Let's head back over it. All right, look on live scope here. I think this is an SUV though. Look how tall it is. It's, no, it's four or five feet. All right, there you go. That's huge. Yeah. It's like a suburban. That's 16 feet tall, long. Let me double check that. Yeah, that's 16 feet, 16 to 18 feet. Oh, it's like a suburban. 
a Suburban or pickup truck upside down or something like that. All right, so let's mark this one. I might have a truck for you or something. Not tall enough. So whatever it is, not tall enough. More like a ridge line and not a Honda ridge line, just a ridge line. We're gonna scan past it and then I'll bring you back to the cross. And we'll see what the uh, current speed is in the middle there by the car, and then we'll pull the buoy up and see if it's attached to the car. Meaning we'll pull it forward and see if it brings us over the top of the car. Because if it, if it does, then they'll know exactly what it is. Or somebody just got an anchor stuck on it, and they thought they'd come back and retrieve their anchor later on. It's also a possibility. And they're like, what's it caught on? We don't know. Got my anchor stuck. I'm gonna come get it later. That happens all the time. All right, so I have a car right there. I think that that buoy is attached to that car. Is it a rope? Is it a chain? Okay, it's a rope, so it's going to be an anchor line. Okay, so right there, we're right over the top of the car. And so if it's already attached to the car, that would be incredible. So I keep holding it. Shake it around, I want to see if I can see it on the car. I'm going to back up a little bit. Keep shaking it, keep shaking it, keep shaking it. Okay, that's beautiful. I think that's attached, that's attached to the car. So let's tie it off tighter, if we can. You don't want to bring the buoy to shore so it's easier for you to get to it. Um, be easier, right? Will it reach? It's pretty long. All right, so let's attach a red line to it, and then we'll finish taking it ashore. Hi there. All right, game plan. Let's bring you up here. We're going to dive on this first car that is closest to the cell phone ping uh, up here at the bridge. And then we have yeah. two other vehicles that we're going to end up uh, diving on today as well. All right. All right, sounds good. We'll see you in a bit. All right, on my way. All right. Good. I bet he's swimming really hard right now. <laughs> he's either that or he's pulling himself. 
so the question is, is can I get up to it? It's not attached to it. I can't find it! The anchor's not attached to it. It's close, but it's not on it. I'm sorry with that. I thought that for sure the anchor was on it. So I'm kind of free diving down there. Kind of going all over the area. And I can't find it. I've seen your boat just end up That's because of the current okay. where I'm at. I was in front of probably a good 30 feet. So that goes down, so I'd probably ride in line with the buoy, plus forward, probably another 20 feet. No, but what we can do, we're going to have to get a new tank, and uh, I don't want to swap it out on the sand, but what I can do, is we can do a sweep pattern. So we could just leave this attached to the pillar over there. 
I can take this rope down with me and then sweep across the bottom and then work my way in every five feet or so. do is I'm just going to pull my rope in when I need it. Oh, okay. So what I would like to do right now is I need to reset this because it needs to be what we have decided based upon where that buoy is at, Matt. Yeah. Okay. Kate and I remember that the car is in line with the cross. To retie off here and have enough line to get me out to the center where I will drop down sweep in fishing line and rope not just on the uh, rope that that anchor is attached to which is not on the car by the way you gotta worry about safety on that one the current the tide is starting to change so it's getting a little bit stronger down there Based upon those two dives, it definitely took a lot longer, consumed a lot more energy than I had hoped. I'm going to make the decision to call it for safety reasons today. Being that it's late in the day and we, will make, we want to make sure that we go into it fully prepared, fully rested. So we are going to stay one more day and we're going to get into the river and check out all three of these cars. We're going to start tomorrow morning on the north side on what I currently believe is probably the most probable car on the west side of Sutton. We're then going to jump to the south side if that first one is not it. Then we will put the boat back in the water if we need to. We will mark this one 
and we are going to dive on it. So stay tuned for day three tomorrow if you've not already done so. Be sure to subscribe and turn on that bell notification so that way you do get a notice. It is free to do so, and that's over on YouTube. Now, if you're over on Facebook, be sure to hit that follow, and we appreciate each and every one of you being here and supporting us as we're out here helping these families free of charge. We want to welcome you back to day three as we are looking for Duke Herringer. It is something that is not supposed to be there that's on the upstream side that could not tell if it's by spoke. I want to say that it was. 